Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Garage Cooking Show, which will soon be an RV show, I promise, we're getting there. Um, so tonight what we're going to do is something a little different for us. We're going to do breakfast for dinner on the Blackstone, got some prepped diced onions and uh, peppers, previously frozen, now sort of ready to go in the griddle, and uh, we've got our egg ready to go, which has garlic, pepper, and some busted up bacon that came off the Blackstone several days ago. We've got our breakfast sausage from Steamy Farms, which is going to be amazing. Um, we've got um, a little bit of a comparison test going on tonight. We're going to actually compare a Cuisinart egg ring right here with the little metal fold up handle. It's kind of hard to see from that angle, but as you can see, it's a solid ring. Um, that's complete, and I'm very excited about that because let me hold it. There you go. what that means is this whole unit um, is going to hold its position on the grill and create a nice flat surface. And we have the Blackstone version. Now this piece is, it might be hard to see, but it's only connected by a rivet in the back. And what that does is it allows this ring to lose its shape and its perfect circular motion, which is going to create gaps. So I'm going to try to straighten it as best I can. And what we're going to do is a side-by-side -side comparison of these two um, devices. And we've got the old favorite Aunt Jemima um, pancake mix, just plain, because we're going to have so much flavor with all the other stuff. We've got about two and a half, two and a quarter um, cups of batter in here. Oh, and it is leaking, see? So, because oh, yeah. the bottom of this is not sealed with silicone, it's just a plastic stopper, it drips. So, I had a feeling it would happen. We left it, and we've got some Bob Evans pre-seasoned restaurant-style diced home fries with paprika and onion, um, which I'm so excited to get going on the grill. And that's going on right now. Got my pan for the egg rings. The egg is good, that's happening, the griddle should be coming up to speed, let's see, yeah, we're going to do this all on low, because we just really don't want, uh, we don't want it overheating, so a little olive oil here just to get started, we'll probably start the potatoes and the sausage around the same time, and the veggies. Because this should theoretically be a pretty fast cook. Famous last words, right? Yeah, I'm just going to get some good old oil going here. Oh, I forgot to turn the light on over here. Thought something was different. There we go. Now I can see much better. Just going to get a nice smooth coating of hot oil on here. Using the entirety of the grill. Or is it a grill? It's a griddle. Yeah. Alright, so it's Allison's favorite part where I make all the noise. It's really loud. But today is Monday, February 15th, so I hope you all had a nice Valentine's Day. Um, we pretty much took it easy and um, had, we have a tradition, Jerry and I kind of together made up this recipe that involves wild mushrooms and hot Italian sausage and pasta. So we make it every year for Valentine's Day for each other while well, I make it. And um, it's kind of like our tradition. So we do need to make it more than once a year, though, because it's absolutely our favorite dish. And we only cook it once a year, which is silly. So we'll start making it a little more often, I think. But anyway, so we had a nice dinner and... Um, little bit of a scare because we had some chocolate covered strawberries 
that were left out up on our sofa and our little puppy came out and ate two of them and it's not the strawberry that's the problem it's the dark and white chocolate that was coated on the strawberries um, we figured it was only probably about half a teaspoon worth of chocolate maybe three-fourths so we started googling it and you know they said symptoms wouldn't happen for one to six hours and so that gave us a little time anyway to Google it and try and figure out if it was way too much or not. And the way they determine that is by weight. Um, I had calls in to um, emergency vets and the uh, poison control center for the ASPCA. And uh, they got back to me and without opening a case, which would have actually cost $75, um, I just told her, I said, look, she had two small um, chocolate-covered strawberries, chocolate. Yeah. And I said, like, you know, a teaspoon at the very most, and she weighs a pound. She goes, I wouldn't worry about her. It doesn't sound like too much. She goes, I can't say anything official unless we open a case. And I said, you know what, you know, my boyfriend and I kind of came to the same conclusion. So... Um, we'll just watch her. But well, the important thing is we were in touch with um, veterinary ER folks in case something started to go south. We could get her in right away. So, as it turns out, dumb little puppy just decided to turn our otherwise nice and peaceful holiday together into something a little less than that, and that's okay. She's allowed. But, okay, so this is on and now it's browning, which is essentially all we really need to do with that. And they look great! Thank you, Bob Evans. I'm going to move in for a close-up. You use a lot of Bob Evans products. Yeah, they're actually not bad. And for those of you that really know me, um, know that I have always done everything from scratch. Everything. So, in the old Allison days, I would cut up all those potatoes by hand, you know, season them by hand, have fresh peppers. And you know what, sometimes you just have to say what the heck, especially if it's a good product. And Bob Evans seems to be pretty good. That's like, my dad used to love his mashed potatoes. And um, we do too. And that's awesome if you wanna have like a turkey dinner outside of the holiday and don't really want to go through the process of doing full blown mashed potatoes from scratch, which I do still do on Thanksgiving, but yeah, so for a quick, easy weekend meal. This is the simple. So again, seasoned potatoes. Yep, ready to go. So it just means one less thing to drive down here. This is what Jerry has taught me. He's taught me to, as long as there are quality ingredients, there's no reason why not, why you can't take shortcuts every once in a while. Ah, but so, the key is to try it. Yeah, you got to try it. Sure. Brand name, right? It's, uh, you know, it doesn't actually work for you, so giving it a shot is key. And we always like to experiment on ourselves because I don't want to put anybody else out and have them have a bad meal. You know, we we generally don't have a problem when we do this kind of experiment, but you know, it can happen. Something can be really awful. Better find out of here and before you plate it to somebody and regret it, and feel bad about it, right? Yeah, like I wouldn't, if I had guests over, I wouldn't serve anything I didn't know. And I probably wouldn't even serve pre-manufactured stuff. I'd do it by hand. Okay, but here's the cool part. So you took something <laughs> that was really particularly bland looking, right? Like this right out of the bag was just the potatoes and what apparently there are onion in there. I didn't really see it. Um, 
And just by adding that little bit, and we're talking probably less than a quarter of a cup of that pepper and onion mix um, to that, look what you got. Yeah. And it's completely different. Look to it now, more southwestern maybe, right? Another thing I love to do along the same line is I get guacamole from the grocery store and essentially I take it out of the little package and I make guacamole, um, kind of assuming that the guacamole I'm buying is just avocado. So I add cumin and cilantro and um, what else do I add? Red onion. So you can always spice up stuff that you buy in the grocery store. I'm backing up, it's so loud. He's got his Patriots pants on. Yeah. We miss football. It's over. It's sad. Yeah, we're spending a lot of time re watching the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta have football in our lives in one way, shape, or form. No, yeah, re or you know listening to the latest round of uh, expert commentary coming out of the movie world. So. Oh yeah, so the next greatest thing we're doing in order to prepare for Chloe, our RV, is we're having a 50 amp outlet put over there, I'm assuming. Um, right the back wall. Yep, right on the back wall, right out there. And so the pl the electrician came by today and brought some wire and some piping. So they're going to come this week and get it ready so that we can uh, hook it right up to Chloe when she gets here and start our packing and familiarizing ourselves with her. And uh, we're getting excited. It's only like three weeks away. And uh, if everything goes well. So we're hoping to pick her up first week in March, and uh, we need to have the driveway, a concrete slab put down first, and that's really what's going to keep us. Because Mother Nature has decided to deposit yet more snow on us tonight through tomorrow, so we're supposed to get another 8 to 10 inches, I think. Yep, more snow and ice coming. Maybe that means I don't have to go to the accountant tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's what I got an SUV for. So as long as they don't close, I'm probably going to go. Unless it's really icy. Yeah. Because right, this is already cooked. You're going to get crispy bits on it though, right? Yeah, and that's what's happening now, right? Okay. We're going on the white brown. you got to have crispy bits on them or... It's going to get loud. All right, I'm going to go back here. Hate the loud now. I'm sure you guys do too. So yeah, there's my SUV. Her name's Bonnie. Yes, we name everybody. All of our cars. Funniest thing is, my dad let me use his car after my car, whose name was Linny, because she was a Lincoln, um, got totaled. I never named his car because I didn't like it. It was a Nissan Altima. It was loaded to the max. It had great... Um, great features on it, like a heating steering wheel, it had the sunroof. I mean, it was loaded, but I just didn't like it. It was four-cylinder, and that just doesn't cut it for me. And it was awful in the snow. Just awful in the snow. So, um, I had to get I had to get something that would work for me in the snow that where I would feel a little more stable and uh, secure, but uh, yeah, as soon as I got her, I named her. Never named Dad's car. We still laugh about that because it's so unlike me. Funny enough. So these happen to be, again, Steam Farm sausage links and they're maple flavored, which is kind of a bonus because 
I'm hoping to be able to drop the pancake batter right down into this area where that flavor is getting seared into the grill top right now. Um, and again, this is just another wonderful benefit of the connection that we have with our local farming community. Yeah, so I went and I bought half a pig from her, and um, we had to include the breakfast sausage because it's absolutely delicious. And I haven't gotten to the point yet where I've tried to make my own sausage. I think I'll leave that to the professionals. I don't know, because there's abilities. But yeah. it might be fun to do. Um, you have to make sure yeah, we've got the grinder and everything, so. It's kind of disgusting. I, I don't think they want to get all that up and close to the meal. Personally. So are you going to do the pancakes before you do the eggs? No. Are you going to do them at the same time? I'm going to try to do them at the same time. It's a little hard, but depending on how much real estate you take up. So I can move the egg over here and just turn the burner off and then just stay warm. You know? So what's your um, plan for getting the food back upstairs? Well, all the potato is going to go back in the Viking bowl. Okay. Sausage on top of that. Maybe okay. The egg on top of the sausage. And then the pancakes, we're going to need to uh, probably grab some foil, which I don't think we have here. Oh, you know what we do have? Oh, uh, yeah. We can, put them in, we can put it all in one of yeah. those. Yeah, we could. And that's probably the market. So, yeah, Jerry and I were talking the other day because we want to make PEI mussels uh, on the griddle, and so we're going to do it in an aluminum pan. And so he said, well, why don't you pick one up and we can see, you know, what kind of a topper we need to buy, you know, for the steam. So good old Allison goes to Sam's Club, and I get, like, what I get? 36 trays yeah. and 36 tops. One so we pack don't of even each. have to yeah, buy right. okay. a pack of each. And that way, we don't have to buy a steam topper okay. for it. We can just put the top on it. And it's like, go big or go home is the way I do it. He asks for one aluminum pan, he gets a pack of 36. Yeah, well. But as you can see, we're already finding uses for them. And they retain the heat pretty well. So, and I'm sorry about the video, but don't mean to get Jerry's back in it. Okay, it's my best side. Now that's not true. Okay, so I think we're going to leave this little train of food going on over here for a moment. Bitten at the girl. Yeah, now do you, you have to smooth that out for the eggs and the pancakes, right? Yeah. Or not? Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. Yep. So yeah, we have the GoPro camera focused down on the grill at the same time, just in case I get lousy footage or something happens. But we use the audio from this. I'm using Jerry's phone and uh, taking the prime video on there so that we can move around and you can hear us better. So now, it is my intention simply do this, and I'm going to try this out here. Hit this with some pan. Oh, you got yourself a garbage can. Drop down right here. Do the same with the Blackstone. 
Drop that one down right there. And then what I'm going to do is take equal portions of these veggies. As much as I can. Again, you drop the onion. And onions. I don't know what it is. <laughs> really don't. They just and a pepper, too. They don't like, well, I dropped a bunch of potato on the floor over there, too. But oh, did you? Left it up. we got to get it up off the floor. So. I think this didn't actually leave the griddle. See, I think that's what I'm going to like about using that griddle a lot, is that you've got the edges that you can use to scoop the food up. I really like that. Thanks, nice, it's amazing. All right. So now I'm just going to try to get equal amounts of this egg into the two rings. And this is the interesting bit, right? And we can see it seeping out of the bottom of the, um, that's the blackstone this one. This is the blackstone. It's definitely seeping out more. It's only slightly seeping out of the Cuisinart. So, yeah. Is it, see, it doesn't even look like it's seeping out of the Cuisinart. I think that's just where you dripped it. Possible. Dribbled it. And I like the fact that the Cuisinart is taller because it's almost overflowing on the Blackstone one. Mm. And the Cuisinart one's higher. It's about an inch high and the other, and the Blackstone is about half an inch high. So it doesn't give you, like if you want to do breakfast sandwich like style stuff like what we're doing, it makes sense to have a higher one. All right, so let's do this. Our style, right? Product Ready? comparison, and here come the pancakes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Look at that. One, two, three. That's so cool. One, two, three. And do we have maple syrup, syrup, by the way? Yeah, we do. You know, fresh bottle of it. Good. So we are going to be getting our maple syrup off at different times, and that's okay. And our maple uh, syrup? Uh, uh, pancakes, sorry. Oh. Sorry. Those eggs are cooking. It's fantastic. Now the sausage has a little bit of... Pancake on it. Pancake in it. Not the worst thing I got. It's all going in the same place, babe. It's just a little flip. Oh, look at that. It's starting to get Crusty. That debris up when we, That's uh, the good stuff. Oh yeah. Now we'll just get this up and out of the way, like normally puppies were. Alright, we'll see what's happening with this. Uh, I think it's still a little. Oh, look at that. Well, those look pretty fine to me. Yeah, I don't think that's too problematic at all, do you? Nope. Let's see what's happening here. Oop, uh, too early, honey. There. Yeah, that's not Blackstone's fault, that's mine. So don't include that. User error. <laughs> um, that is all on me. That's okay. Yeah, we weren't going for beauty there, we are just going for yummy. Yeah, don't lift that one up. We're going to let that sit for a few minutes. I'm pretty happy about this so far. You should be able to flip that one over if you wanted to. This one? Yeah. I've never been ma able to master the pancake. Yep. Well, I'd say they both do the job. Um, I like the thicker one for reasons already stated. Kind of making a mess there. You are making a mess. Yeah, by the way, it's like 
7 o'clock at night. 6.30. I might be wrong. So that's good. Some pancakes coming off. Yeah, it's 6.30. I'm going to just do another white coating. I know people have actually used Pam on the grill. Yeah, you can do that if you don't want oil. Yeah, if you don't want them as greasy. Some, uh, you know, something else to try at some point, I guess, right? Yep, so as you can see, this is just becoming a mirage of food. Mm -hmm. yep. well, With the exception of the pancakes, I think. Okay, well, this one, one, two, two three. three. One, two, three. I don't know who's going to eat all this food, by the way. Uh, well, one, two, three. I'll figure that out later. One, two, three. One, two and a half. I was just going to kind of say we could have kept that batter in the, put it in the fridge on the plate. Yeah, you know. And every, saved it for tomorrow. Everybody says that. I'm and then they really never do it. I know. I had a whole lot of success with that. I mean, I know it certainly happens a lot in the restaurant business and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, you know, for the amount of leftovers we actually do consume, and we don't leave a lot, okay? I we mean, do eat a lot of leftovers. Almost everything we like, eat. we always have leftovers pretty much after every meal. And I think that that is wonderful, personally. And it's usually like one serving of something. So we'll have a smorgasbord night, leftover night, we call it. And we have like we'll each end up eating something different or we'll just share, combine the dishes. Not combine them, but have half of each. And it's a good night. We actually look forward to it because the food we cook is pretty darn good in the first place. And most meals are better, you know, after a couple of days of sitting together, marrying all those flavors. Well, that's looking pretty good over there. And those look done. They're all bubble nicely. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's get a little flip ski. Look at you doing them two at once. I spoke too soon. It's okay. All right. But I love that sear, so I don't, you probably can't see it, but see it, but it's like a crust. And it's just so cool. The same thing happens with the steak. It's like a crust. And see, we can take my little top that I bought to go along with them. Fits right neatly on top, and you just fold in the corners and the sides. It'll stay nice and warm. I'm so smart. You ah. are. And yes, I will be coming back down to clean the griddle top later, but um, we like to eat together. Yeah. <laughs> all the food is hot, so I come down and after all the eating is done and, you know, upstairs clean up. Yeah, I'll usually clean up the kitchen and um, while he's down here cleaning up the grill. Hot food is always our top priority over cleaning. For good obvious reason. Yep. I mean, you know, you want to enjoy your food. That's right. I don't want to, uh, um, you know, who wants to eat a cold pancake? Because that's about as exciting as, you know. Cold pancakes are the worst. Yeah, they are. That's what we should have done is brought butter down here and melted the butter. Yeah, in the right. In fact, I think these are good. Yeah. I was going to say, they're probably more than done. Love the big, big skillet. Uh, Here we have it, guys. We've got our potatoes, our eggs, sausage, pancakes. Oh, my gosh. Anybody hungry, come over, because we got tons of food. Yeah, well, I mean, because it's a little weird. Yeah, I can't do it one-handed. Yeah. You gotta hook it on one end and then bend it and 
work your way around it. And that's it. So whoever carries that up, oh, you're going to put it right up there? No, I'm going to carry it. Well, use the gloves. I don't need to if I've got it here as long as you get the doors. Okay. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.